Well, I'm going to start to uh, to present what is automation. Uh, and uh, for me, automation, we can divide this word uh, in two parts. One is the software and the other is the hardware. Uh, we can also mix all the topics uh, that uh, uh, we talk in this uh, uh, meeting uh, uh, previous for the uh, digitalization. For instance, the hardware could be a robot, could be some machine, and the software could be also some deep learning or some IT that we want to uh, uh, put in our system. And how can we teach this automation to our uh, food engineering, even for our technicians? And that's uh, the challenge of this. Uh, as you can see here, um, in the beginning, uh, the first contact uh, with, the, with the, all this process um, was uh, like a manual control. Uh, someone should uh, uh, turn on, uh, check everything, and uh, uh, this operate will uh, uh, solve and processing everything, even if he, he, he must uh, mistake something, uh, then he, he should correct or uh, you're going to create a lot of waste. And uh, for instance, for food safety, uh, it's important to have a, a continuous supervision. Also, it's important to have some um, hygienic, uh, and for that reason, sometimes it's better to have some automatic control. And the idea is to uh, develop some machines that could uh, replace human to this repetitive task. And as we can see in this image, this is the first contact with an automation system. As you can see, uh, the human interaction uh, between between the machines and everything to make the control of uh, all uh, of all process uh, to ma uh, maintain and also to guarantee that everything is working well. Um, is this the, the first contact for uh, the a typical operator in the in the in the system? Also, uh, another contact is uh, when they they have to, to change the recipe to do something, and then they should uh, uh, change the parameters of each item uh, to develop some activity in the in the company. And how can they do this? Uh, uh, how can we can control this in the in the factory? Well, the process is very complex. Anyway, we must need some interaction, some operator interface that could be giving some information to a, a PLC. And the PLC, it will be the brain. It will be uh, where do where we will going to do the uh, all the logic, all the process that will going to change the states of each machine. And also, this PLC will going to read the inputs and also activate all the outputs of each machine that we have in the field. Anyway, to do that, we must do a lot of uh, algorithms and one typical algorithm, it will be the sequence control structure that we are going to create a lot of actions and for each action, we're going to perform some task and uh, if, it, if it, this task we're going to uh, be uh, done, then uh, there are some transitions that will going to activate the next task, and then for that, we're going to change the action that we're going to uh, perform for doing the control of our system. And why do uh, we need this automation for food process? Well, we 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 think about uh, this uh, um, system, and we can divide it for the food processing, also for the post processing uh, operations. 
and there are a lot of uh, advantage to to in, uh, put uh, this automation in the in the food process. For instance, we can do the production control, we can do the food safety, we can uh, guarantee some quality of our uh, raw materials during the food processing. We can add some flexibility in the production. We can reduce also the uh, or create some economy for our production. Anyway, there are a lot of advantage that allow the, the system to uh, increase uh, the quality of uh, what we are doing. And of course, uh, with the with the with the the time that uh, we we are seeing, uh, there are a lot of uh, increasing uh, contributions uh, in other topics that can be add uh, in this kind of uh, digitalization. For instance, the artificial intelligence, uh, the autonomous mobile controls, the robots and also the automated guided vehicles that could help uh, in the in the all the process of the the, um, the food processing and also for the post processing operations and uh, this these requirements to 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 have a, a automatic system in the in the in the company increase not only the the flexibility also they 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 can increase the economy of our, our system and they are more reliable and for that reason we uh, can easily uh, uh, impose this kind of uh, requirements to uh, increase the 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 digitalization in our uh, our system uh, and when we look at automation uh, we can we can see that the PLC, as I said before, is the brain, and this brain is like when we want to replace uh, some people that are working in the company uh, to doing some repetitive task or some dangerous task. What we are doing is to substitute to replace these people with uh, with uh, machines, but we must do the control. We must evaluate, we must measure everything, even, uh, for instance, make the recognition of objects. And this kind of controllers allows not only the communication between all the devices, uh, because they have a lot of uh, uh, protocols that allow the communication of all the devices, they also they allow the interface between the human and the machines. And if we look at the the this uh, um, uh, picture that I'm showing, we can divide everything in different process. For instance, the the control of the process of each equ equipment, even if we want to control the system that we are providing from the information that we receive from the. Uh, ARP or from the data that we receive from the top. And this kind of uh, uh, PLCs uh, can uh, generate and controlling a single device and for each device we can communicate and then we can give this information to the top and for that we can we are not only controlling we are measure we are optimized and we can schedule everything on time and there are some examples and this is a huge uh, high and vast uh, field uh, we can uh, select uh, what kind of devices to perform for instance the communication uh, through the web or uh, to do the communication from the different different kind of uh, process, and also for for doing the the software, uh, the te technicians should understand how does it work, how can we do uh, some function block, or how can we implement uh, the ladder diagram or these sequential function charts that I showed you before. 
there are a lot of possibilities that allow the, the people to uh, create some logical devices to uh, perform the control of this system. And the sequential uh, function charts is one of the simple uh, ways to uh, work with this kind of um, uh, automation. We can create some steps, and in these steps we can associate some actions. And for instance, what we are uh, uh, doing here is only to start and stop a motor. And for each actions that we do, we also have some logical conditions. If we, we want to start a, a motor, we must press the start button, for instance, and then the motor will going to start. Of course, if we want to stop the motor, we should uh, uh, press the, the key that to, to stop the motor, then we are going to have this transition to change for the next step. And for each step, we can provide a, a different action. And of course, with a lot of uh, sequential charts, we we can uh, uh, create some logical sequence to uh, change from one state to another. And uh, when we are in a, in a, a state, for instance, if we are in the first state, if the uh, transition uh, T1 occurs with a, some condition, if this condition is true, we are going to change for the second step and of course, when we activate the second step, it means that we finish the first step and then we can activate the second action that is in the second step and we inactivate the first step. That means that we already make this transition and, and then we are doing what we are uh, planning to do in the second step. And there are a lot of ways to do, for instance, the if then else, uh, to do the parallel of uh, some different actions, to repeat and win some cycle, to do mutual exclusion, uh, or do the synchronization between some steps. And with this, we can uh, develop our uh, logical uh, step um, motion for our system. Of course, when I, 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 I talk about the squaring uh, of the, the software and the, the hardware for the automation, we must do also uh, the real time operation for the task. OK, because we could have different uh, priorities for doing something, even for the software or uh, to the hardware. And with this also, we have mechanisms to uh, do some uh, real task because when we want to do some task, then we ask the PLC to do another task. We must complete the first task. Otherwise, uh, this interruption uh, uh, could fail and then uh, our system uh, didn't, uh, that doesn't work. And in the, in the food process uh, system, there are a lot of process. They are the same for each company. Uh, when we want to do the uh, fusion of something or if we, we want to transport some process or if we want to uh, control the temperature or the, the fluid of, of uh, some uh, mechanism. And for that, we need a lot of sensors. We needed a lot of I.O. Uh, input and output models uh, to perform this kind of control. And there are a lot of uh, sensors like temperature, weight pressure, uh, specific gravity and other uh, sensors that we can collect this information and then we can provide this information to the PLC. And with that, we're going to have some uh, information to perform uh, some algorithms like uh, uh, IT, uh, in intelligent artificial or deep learning to do uh, something more efficient. Uh, let me show you some movies uh, that uh, can show more what is the uh, automation. For instance, here, Home Home is one of the suppliers of uh, uh, 
uh, PLCs. And we can see also how can we uh, use the PLCs or the automation for uh, food, uh, pick and place application in food environment. And we have also some uh, vision system that could provide there are the, the, the objects you want to pick in place. And then we can create a And as you can see, the, the first system is a vision system that gives you the position. PLC. The PLC, we can provide the positions for the role the uh, object. Of course, the field is we need a uh, different uh, Well, what we are seeing now is the specification for do these trajectories, because the robot to, to do the pick and place movement should uh, perform something. Otherwise, we're going to do the, the impact of the collusion and, and destroy the object. And also for the inspection of the vision system, what the camera uh, is giving is the photo and also we can have the, the position and then a lot of robots will going to substitute people to do this kind of task. Another example, sorry, is for instance, uh, even the pick and place for uh, distribution. Here what we, we are seeing is the for uh, uh, industrial system, the using of deep learning. Uh, as you can see, we have different uh, boxes and they are uh, put it in, a, in a, a, um, um, a place with the different sizes. And what we have is a, 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 a deep learning system uh, that uh, uh, give information to the PLC that also give information to robot to do the pick and place. And this is now possible. A few years ago, it was almost uh, difficult because of the structure of the sequence. Uh, uh, and it was not so easy to perform this kind of tasks. Now with, the, with the, uh, the sensors that are integrated in the system, it's quite easy to, to, to develop this kind of uh, solutions. And another one to finalize, also the use of the mobile robots. With mobile robots, we can supply everything and then we can also provide some uh, hygiene uh, transportation of everything from one place to another, and then replace people uh, doing this kind of repetitive uh, tasks. We can see even for the picking area, uh, storage, uh, everything could, could be done by uh, small robots.
Well, also, let me stop this and I bring something. I don't know if you can see here, but uh, what we have is a, a PLC and also a drive. This drive is interconnected as the uh, Ethercat or internet communication, and that, that allows to control, for instance, one motor, as we can see here. And this control is typical the same that we are using for controlling the, the motor of an industrial robot or even the control of a motor of a, a mobile robot. And the, the main goal is to um, teach the students that they can uh, create this kind of structure uh, algorithm and then they can combine and read sensors and uh, receive some information. Also do the communication between the PLC with this kind of devices and also use this uh, new uh, technology like deep learning uh, or a vision system and so on uh, to perform uh, simple tasks, uh, for instance, that uh, uh, like a pick and place movement from uh, a, a, a simple uh, task in, in, a, in a company. And I think uh, that's it.